Hey, what's going on everybody? Barrett here with Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna cover something that a lot of you have been asking for, and that's a comparison between the Arendal 1723-2V and 2S subwoofers with something a little bit more budget, the Tone Winner D6000 subwoofer. I recently released some reviews on the Arendal 1723 subwoofers, as well as a comparison of the 2V versus the 2S, and I had mentioned doing a comparison between those subwoofers and something a little bit more budget friendly, like the Tone Winner D6000. There was quite a few of you that were interested in that, so that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. So what I did is I measured the frequency response of each of these subwoofers in the exact same location, which is the front right hand corner of my room. And then I used a software called Roo or Room EQ Wizard to measure that frequency response. And then I did compression testing to show which one would have more output before it compresses in that exact location in my room. Now, of course, there are going to be some differences between these subwoofers when it comes to specs. Now, if you want detailed specs, uh, their websites do a great job of explaining them. And I've dropped links to each one of these subwoofers down in the description below. If you do want to check out the detailed specs, but I'm going to cover just some of the basic specs to help you understand these subwoofers a little bit better before we get into the comparison of the room measurements. The Arendal subwoofers both put out 1200 watts RMS and the Tone Winner subwoofer is putting out 800 watts RMS. The other main difference is the drivers. The D6000 is pushing a single 15 inch driver and both of the Arendal subwoofers are pushing two 13.8 inch drivers. Both of the Arendal subwoofers do have Bluetooth so they can connect to the free app that Arendal supplies. The Tone Winner D6000 also has Bluetooth so it can connect to the free app that Tone Winner provides. The other thing to point out is that the D6000 is ported as well as the 2V is ported, the 2S is sealed, but the D6000 and the 2V are able to run in sealed mode by blocking their vents or blocking their ports with foam and then putting them in sealed mode with the DSP on the app. The main difference between these subwoofers is of course going to be the price. So the Arendal 1723 2V is priced in at 3599 US dollars, the 2S is 2899 US dollars, and the Tone Winner D6000 is 1399 US dollars. And I know that there's some of you out there that are going to be saying, oh well you can't compare these, the price is so different. Well you know what, yes we can. And the reason that we can compare them is because I'm telling you the price up front. There is a price difference here. One is more budget, one is more expensive. But what this is going to tell us when we compare the output is what you're going to get for your price. So at $1,399, you're going to get this output with the D6000. And for $3,600 for the 2V, this is what you're going to get for the Arendal subwoofer. So... I know that there's some of you out there that don't like when things are compared that have a vast price difference, but there's also just as many of you out there that want to know so that they know what they're getting for, for the price difference. And that is exactly why we're going to compare these subwoofers today, is to just show you the difference between something a little bit more budget and something a little bit more expensive. All right, so we've covered the main differences between these subwoofers. And before we get into the measurements, let's talk about sound quality because I know that a lot of you are going to ask about sound quality. So here's how I'll break it down, at least uh, in my opinion and what I observed with these subwoofers. Now the Arendal subwoofers both have two 13.8 inch drivers. So if you add up the cone area, that's equal to about a 20 or 21 inch driver. That's quite a bit more cone area versus the single 15 inch that the D6000 is pushing. We also have to keep in mind that the Arendal subwoofers do have more power. Uh, they're putting out 1200 watts RMS and the D6000 is putting out 800 watts RMS. But what I can tell you is that most likely most of you out there are not going to hear a difference in these subwoofers at lower volumes, at like normal listening volumes when you're not pushing them to their limits. You're probably not going to hear much of a difference unless you're able to put them side by side and AB them. Then maybe the Arendals have a little bit more nuance to them uh, versus the D6000, keeping in mind that these are significantly more expensive than the D6000. But where you are going to hear more of a difference, I believe, is at higher volumes. And if you're pushing these more to their limits. I am going to be comparing these as single subwoofers, but do keep in mind that the D6000 is so inexpensive that you'd be able to buy two of them for the same price or less than the Arendal subwoofers. Don't think that you're going to be missing out greatly if you get a D6000 versus the Arendal 1723 2V. Uh, yes, I do believe that the sound quality is slightly better on the 2V, but again, that's mostly at higher volumes. At lower volumes, I don't believe that you're going to hear a difference at all. If you are able to have them side by side so you can switch back and forth really quickly, maybe you'd be able to hear some differences. I personally didn't experience any myself, but maybe those of you with a more trained ear would be able to hear it, but I wasn't able to hear any difference between these subwoofers at low volumes. So when it comes to the sound quality, I do have to give the nod to the Arendal subwoofers. Uh, yes, they are more expensive, but because they have two drivers and more cone area, I believe that they do remain a little bit more composed when it comes to pushing them to their limits versus the D6000. But again, you can always purchase two D6000s for the price of the uh, Arendal 2S and less than the price in the Arendal 2V. All right, so I hope that helps those of you out there that were wondering about sound quality. If you have any other questions, drop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, so now that we've covered 
all that, let's hop over on my computer and have a look at the measurements. First of all, I do want to let you guys know that all of these subwoofers did not have room calibration activated or enabled on my Anthem AVM90. This is just the raw subwoofers with no help from room calibration. It's just their internal DSPs. All the measurements were taken with the subwoofers in the same spot in the front right hand corner of my room and they were all taken with the same software and the same calibrated microphone. All right, so what I did is I took compression testing. For those of you that aren't aware what compression testing is, all I'm doing is I'm taking a frequency response measurement in my room with the software and the calibrated microphone that I mentioned. And what it's gonna show me is the output of each frequency uh, across the frequency range in my room. Now, what I don't want you to pay too much attention to is the, the peaks and the nulls in my frequency response. That's just the subwoofers interacting with my room. What we want to look at here is what their overall output was at each frequency. So when you see compression, what you're going to see is the top line. So I bump it up 3 dB on my AVM90. And if that measurement starts getting closer to the measurement below it, instead of maintaining that 3 dB increase, well, now you're experiencing compression. And what that is, is the DSP basically compressing that frequency to help um, reduce the risk of damage to the subwoofer or the driver and the amplifier. All right, so let's have a look at these measurements. All right, guys, so here we are on my computer and I have the room measurements pulled up. So we're going to start off in sealed mode. So I have the D6000 measurements in sealed mode. And of course, I have the 2S, which is sealed. And then I have the 2V in sealed mode. So let's start off at looking at the compression testing for the D6000 in sealed mode. So there we are at 27, 24, and then 21 volume, and then 18, 15, and 12. So 12 is definitely compressing, and 15 is definitely compressing. Um, 18 looks to be pretty good. I don't see... Oh, there is a little bit of compression... Because this is a comparison, I don't want to have any compression, so I'll remove that line as well. But in all honesty, it's so there's so little compression happening here. Technically, I guess I could use it, but it's only like 0.8 of a dB compression, not even a full dB. But because this is a comparison, we'll take that line down as well, and we'll use this line as our max output for the D6000 in sealed mode. All right, so for the 2S, an EQ1 is what I chose my measurements in. So here's the 2S volume 27, 24, 21, 18, 15. All right, so let's remove this one just to help simplify things. So volume 21 on the D6000, we'll just remember that. So obviously this volume 15 is compressing. And obviously this line is compressing as well. You can see it's getting awfully close to touching here. So we have these three lines that look like we're getting all 3 dB increase. So there's no compression. So we'll use this top red line for the 2S. So at volume 21 also. So the D6000 at volume 21 and the front or the 2S at volume 21. And let's have a look at the 2V in sealed mode, which I used EQ2. So volume 27, 24, 21. 18, 15, 12, and 9. So 9, we're definitely compressing, so we can't use that one. Um, <clears throat> at volume 12, did I put any notes here? No, it doesn't look like I put any notes, and it doesn't look like it's compressing anywhere, but maybe here, let's check here. So this is for the 2V invented mode, 97.47. So we should see 100, 100.47, 100.22. Well, you know what? That is compressing a little bit, like 0.2 of a dB, which we we didn't let the D6000 get away with anything on compression. I think it was 0.8 of a dB. So we can't use this red line, but we can use this purple line. I think we're not. It looks pretty, pretty good across the board here. So we'll use this purple line on this one simply because it is a comparison. We don't want to get let them get away with any compression. So at volume 15 uh, for the 2V in sealed mode, and then it was volume 21 for the D6000 and volume 21 for the 2S. So as you can see, they're <laughs> surprisingly close, especially in this range right here. Uh, maybe, you know what, let's do the, the D6000 versus the 2V first. So the D6000 is this blue line, and then the 2V is this purple kind of fuchsia line here. And you can see, like, this D6000 is impressive because the 2v really impressed me with it with the output in the room like it shook my room but the d6000 is not really far behind like they start to deviate a little bit here at 15 hertz so at 15 hertz they're basically identical they're equal um let's just change the limits a bit here so we can see so at 10 hertz which i didn't bother taking measurements 
of the uh, the 2V below 10 hertz and that's simply because it kind of starts to fall off really quickly uh, the d6000 had a slower roll off and that's why i chose to measure it a little bit lower simply to show that it is a slower roll off but at 10 hertz here we're at 96.94 on the 2v and 93.74 so 3.5 db difference at 10 hertz the d the d for the 2v and then at 15 hertz we're identical we're at 96.67 at 20 hertz we're pretty much identical too. uh 99.15 uh 30 hertz like you can see all through here they're pretty similar like there's a pretty big gap here i think i may have been running the d6000 in the different phase here though and that might be why we're kind of reversed uh let me just see here i think i did reverse the phase polarity zero yeah so that's probably why we're seeing this difference over here where they're not really lining up with the room modes and that's because i had the uh the phase reversed on the d6000 the reason i did that is because it gave a somewhat flatter response but that's why you're seeing i believe that's why you're seeing a difference in the peaks and nulls here so like i said before kind of ignore the peaks and nulls you want to assume that these lines are going to be fairly flat after room calibration like these peaks here are going to be brought down somewhere around here ish you know if the room calibration is pretty good and then you can have a fairly linear response it is going to bring some of these nulls up a little bit as well but it's better to do that with placement than it is to room calibration but that's for a totally different video as you can see when it comes to output these subwoofers especially below uh 35 ish hertz are pretty similar like and which is impressive for the d6000 because i was blown away by the 2v so output wise d6000 is doing pretty good okay enough rambling uh let's leave the d6000 up and let's go with the 2S uh, at volume 21. So here's the 2S uh, versus the D6000 in sealed mode. Uh, and as you can see, they're pretty close. Again, they do start to deviate a little bit at 20 hertz. Uh, the, the 2S has a little bit more in these lower frequencies. Uh, so let's try. So at 15 hertz, where's 15? Right here-ish. We're at 96.3 on the D6000 and 98.3. 98 on the 2s so there is a bit of a difference below 20 hertz but again considering the price difference here the d6000 is keeping up with these guys it's keeping up quite well you get the same kind of hump here on the 2s as you did with the 2v around 61 hertz i do believe that the polarity is switched here or the phase is switched i believe the d6000 well i know that the d6000 is on zero but here we are looking at all three of them and as you can see they're pretty close like surprisingly in in sealed mode they're pretty close so if you are planning on running things in sealed mode you got a pretty nice response on all three of these subwoofers it's looking really good let's move on to the d6000 and the 2v in ported mode i'm still going to bring up the 2s which is a sealed subwoofer it doesn't have a ported mode but we're still going to bring that up uh, to show you guys so here's the d6000 in ported mode volume 27 24 21 18 15. all right so 15 we're clearly compressing uh, it's coming close and on volume 18 uh yeah we're getting i mean on the super low stuff here by 10 hertz we're compressing it looks pretty good otherwise now let's have a look at 20 hertz 103.23 so we should see 106.23 okay so i guess okay well like i said this is a comparison so we're going to be strict so we're going to use this blue line at volume 21 not this orange one so the d6000 max output in ported mode is going to be this volume 21 and as you can see in ported mode it does roll off more after 20 hertz versus in sealed mode where it had a much slower roll off towards the 5 hertz range so let's compare it with the 2s first which the 2s in sealed was volume 21 is where we were uh, compressing in the last comparison there. So as you can see, uh, the D6000 has more output above 16.7 hertz, uh, significantly so, but uh, above 16 hertz, you're looking at, okay, so at 20 hertz, you have 99.4 on the 2S and 103.23 on the D6000. At this peak here, we're at 110, basically 111 dB at 30. 32 and a half hertz uh, so 111 versus 105.4 so pretty significant output differences there um, but below 16 hertz the 2s has a much slower roll off so you're getting more performance in these lower frequencies uh, versus the d6000 in ported mode but that's to be expected usually a sealed subwoofer is going to roll off slower uh, in the lower frequencies and it also depends on what the port tuning is on the ported subwoofer but let's now have a look so volume 21 let's have a look at the 2v in ported mode uh, so the 2v in eq1 uh, at volume 27 24 21 18 15 
and 12. So 12 is clearly compressing. The lines are getting pretty close. Um, 15 is compressing. You can see right here, it's dipping in towards the orange line a little. Yeah, so that's close enough. All right, so this orange line is going to be our max output for the 2V imported mode. And then our max output on the D6000 was volume 21. So as you can see here, again, the, the D6000 is keeping up all the way down to about 22 hertz and then it starts to deviate a little bit here so at 20 hertz the 2v is at 104.92 and the d6000 is at 103.41 so not much of a difference there at 20 hertz but it does start to get bigger as we go lower so at 15 hertz we're at 102.35 and 96.2 seven six so like i said before the d6000 in ported mode starts to roll off a little bit quicker after 20 hertz versus its sealed mode and the benefit i guess you're getting with the 2v is going to be your output below 20 hertz uh, it is going to make a difference especially in these lower octaves 87 at 10 hertz versus 95.87 at 10 hertz so that's that's a pretty big difference there so that's going to be your benefit with the 2v but everywhere else like above 20 hertz they're pretty equal. Like the D6000 actually has a little bit more in some of these frequencies, basically 102 versus 101.75. So you're going to get a dB more in some of these frequencies on the D6000 versus the 2V uh, in ported mode. But I mean, considering the price, that's, that's pretty impressive of the D6000 to keep up this well. All right, so there you guys have it. That's the difference you're going to get between the 3600 US dollar 2V and the 1400 US dollar D6000. Uh, in sealed mode, they're awfully close. They're very close in sealed mode. In ported mode, the 2V does manage to uh, put out some more output below 20 hertz here, but the D6000 for its price is pretty impressive uh, with, with keeping up with the 2S and the 2V uh, minus this difference down here in the low lower octaves in ported mode. I hope that really helps you guys uh, put things into perspective for what you can get from a budget subwoofer uh, versus a more expensive subwoofer. We already kind of talked about the sound quality. Uh, there is going to be some slight differences there, but we talked about that in the beginning of the video. But I think that these uh, measurements really shine a light on how performance oriented the D6000 truly is. Uh, for its price. Like I said in the review, I was blown away by the 2V, but when it comes to output numbers and you're looking at output numbers specifically, uh, it's hard not to be blown away by the D6000 when I'm looking at these numbers. This is pretty impressive. And I, I honestly was not expecting it to be this close. I was expecting the 2V to outperform in output like noticeably significantly in these numbers. Anyway, these measurements really were a surprise to me. This isn't what I was expecting to see, but uh, it's really cool and really interesting to see how well the D6000 is stacking up uh, versus more expensive subwoofers when it comes to the sheer output of it. Um, and it's also really curious to see how a more expensive subwoofer is stacking up output wise uh, to a less expensive subwoofer. But let's move on with this video. I really hope that those measurements were helpful for you guys to kind of understand um, what the differences are between these subwoofers and what you can get for a budget price versus a more expensive price uh, when it comes to output. I have to admit guys, the Tone Winner D6000 impressed me once again when it comes to the output. That thing is just an output beast. If if you're looking for a lot of output at a very inexpensive price, the Tone Winner D6000 truly is hard to beat. And again, I think it proved that with these measurements. But I don't say that to discredit the Arendal subwoofers at all. We have to keep in mind that the 2S is the C uh, subwoofer and it's very compact and has a very small size and it still has some pretty decent output uh, when it comes to a compact subwoofer. And for those of you that watched the review, you know that I was blown away by the 2V as well. It is a fantastic subwoofer. It has some killer output as well. It really does excite my room. It just energizes my room. I was very impressed with the Arendal subwoofer. We also have to remember that the Arendal 1723 subwoofers, I feel have a nicer aesthetic. Uh, they're a little bit more clean. They're a little bit more simplistic. If you have them at the front of your room and you have the front of the subwoofer facing you, it's very simplistic. It's just kind of a plain blank front with a little Arendal logo. You might not even know it's a piece of audio equipment unless you know it's a piece of audio equipment. So I think the wife acceptance factor might be a little bit higher on the Arendal subwoofers just simply because of the uh, design aesthetic that they went with. But the tone winner, given the price, given its performance, I mean, what a true beast. So we are looking at two different subwoofers that offer you two different things here. The 2V has plenty of output as well the 2s is more compact but still has really great output but if if your budget doesn't allow for those the d6000 is still killing it when it comes to output this thing is a true beast um, and i think this proves it yet again i'll remind you that if you are interested in checking out the specs of these subwoofers or if you want to know the current pricing or if you want to purchase one of these subwoofers i've dropped links down in the description below please do use those links if you do plan on making a purchase it really doesn't cost you guys anything it's not going to cost you extra uh, it's going to be the exact same price but it really does help out the channel so i 
really do appreciate it. And make sure that you guys remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.